Hello everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about the last type of factorizing and that's called grouping. Grouping is done when you have four terms or five terms. So here we have a question that has four terms. So what we do with grouping, as the name suggests, you put them into groups. So you typically you can take these first two and then you can take the second two in a group. So in the first two, the common factor is, well, there's an A, so that's now gone, and there's an X. Well, there's one X here and two X's here, so we can take out one, and then you'd be left with one X over here. There's nothing left over here because that X is gone, so we just say plus one. Then we say plus. Then in this second part, there's a B in both of them, so we can cross that out, and then we can take out one X, and then you'd still be left with X plus one. How do we know if we group them correctly? We look in the next step. So in this next step, we've got x plus 1 and x plus 1. So that is a good thing. If those were different, then we would have to start the question again, and we would group them in different ways. So you, you guys know how to factorize these type of things perfectly. We've got two terms. So both of them have an x and both of them have an x plus 1. So we can take that out as a common factor. So we say x, x plus 1. Then we open up a bracket. Now in the first term, we still have an a. In the second term, we still have a b. So we can just say a plus b, like that. And there's your final answer. Here's another one. So typically, we're going to group the first two, and then the second two will go together. So in the first two, you can take out a common factor of x squared, and then you'd be left with x plus 1. In the second term, you can take out an a, and then you'd be left with x plus 1. Great. These two are the same, and so we've grouped them correctly. And so we can take out x plus 1 as a common factor, because x plus 1 is in both of them. Then you'd be left with x squared plus a. Here's another one. So typically, we're going to group the first two. It won't always be like that. But then, Kevin, how do we know? Guys, with practice, you'll start to realize. And remember when you get to the next step, if the two brackets that you form are different, then you've done it, then you've grouped them incorrectly. So if we group the first two together, there's a common factor there of x squared. Then you'd still be left with an x over here and a minus 2 over there. Then for this one, you can take out a 4, and you'd be left with x minus 2. So here we go. If these two are the same, then it's OK. So now we take out x minus 2 as a common factor in the front. So that's now gone, and that's now gone. And then you're left with x squared plus 4. So here's another one. So we can take these two terms and these two terms. In the first one, your common factor, there's a 3. And then this one has two x's. This one has one x, so you can take out an x then what would you be left with? Well, in the first term, there would still be an x, and in the second term, we still have 2. Then the common factor here will be a 4, and then you would be left with x plus 2. So the second bracket is the same, so that's a good thing. So we take out x plus 2 as a common factor in the front. That's gone, that's gone. And so you'd be left with 3x plus 4. This one is very interesting. It's got a bit of a little, well, it's got a trick, but I'm going to show you how it works. So we can group the first two together, and then we can group the second part together. So in the first one, you can take out x squared, and then you would be left with 2x minus 1. Now, students get confused with this negative. So don't spend too much time wondering whether you should use a negative or a positive. If you want, just choose a positive. Okay. Now, in these two terms, the common is a 5. So you take out a 5. Now, we're going to be left with minus 2x over here. But let me explain. Because if I had to multiply these two together, what would that give you, a negative or a positive? Well, a negative, And it would be negative 10. And that's what we had over here. Then this part is going to be plus 1. But let me explain. Because if we had to multiply these two together, that would give you positive 5, and that's what you had. So the important thing is that you always end up with what you had. So, so for example, if we had to multiply 
Well, let me just explain that again. If we had to multiply these two, that's a negative. Great. If you had to multiply these two, that's a positive. So for example, if I left this, if I took out this negative and I left this 2x as positive, then when you multiply these two together, that's positive 10. But your original question had negative 10, so that wouldn't be correct. But now look what happens. Here we've got a 1, which is positive, and a 2, which is negative. Here we've got a 2 that is positive and a 1 that is negative. So they, they're opposites of each other. So what we rather do is we're going to change this plus to a minus. Because now if I say minus 5, then this becomes 2x minus 1. But let me explain. If I multiply these two, I end up with negative 10. So that's great. And if I multiply these two, I end up with positive 5. So that all works out. But now, look here. Those are now the same. And that's what we want. So now we can take out a common factor in the front as 2x minus 1. And then we're left with x squared minus 5. Please watch this specific example a few times until you completely understand what I said. Here's another one. So typically we will just group the first two uh, the common number that can go into 12 and 21 is 3. This one, and then you can take out a p squared. Then what would we have left? We would have 7p minus 7. No, not 7p. 4p minus 7. Sorry about that. Plus. Now here we can take out a 7. And then you'd be left with 4p minus 7. Great. So have a look at that. Those are the same, so we know we've grouped them correctly. So we can now take out 4p minus 7 in the front, and then we're left with 3p squared plus 7. Here's the last one. So if we group the first two and then the second two, the common in the first two would be p, and then you'd be left with p plus 4y. Now here we've got these negatives, so let's just pretend that we should take out a positive, and the common thing out of those is 3. Now you'd be left with minus p plus 4y, but let me just, oh no, minus 4y, actually. How do I know that? Because if I had to multiply those two, that's negative. And if I had to multiply those two, then it's still negative. Great, so that's correct. But now the problem is, is that these are different. So what I do is, you can sort of just put a line right through that, and then start again. So here where you made this a positive, switch it to a negative 3. Then your bracket will become p plus 4y. But let me prove it to you, because that still gives you a negative, and that still gives you a negative. So everything's correct. So this second line, it wasn't wrong. It just didn't give us what we want. But now we did it in a different way. So it's... It's still correct, but what's nice is that we still have p plus 4y, which are the same. And then we can factorize p plus 4y out in the front, and then you're left with p minus 3. Thanks for watching this video.